It's hard to tell much from a single trailer, but where the first game was a primarily try not to die in the world's worst forest, we get the feeling that Sons of the Forest will be a more narrative focused as it seems that you'll be actively hunting down the monsters amidst the trees. There is no word of a release date yet, but given our experience with the first game, we found the VR version clumsy in spots, but still atmospheric and terrifying. We'll definitely be keeping our eye on this one. The premise of the Eternal Cylinder hasn't changed since it was announced. You're an alien on an alien world that is endlessly being squashed under the weight of a giant cylinder that rolls over all vegetation and animal life that doesn't outrun it. Like the classic evolution game Spore, it's a vast land full of unique intelligent animals, real-time world destruction and organic exploration with puzzles designed to encourage you to overcome hazards, enemies and challenges in unique ways. To succeed, you need to find other creatures to band together with, learn about the world around you, evolve to meet the challenges and mutate to obtain new traits that might help. In Undying, players will take on the role of Anne Ling, a mother who has already been infected by a zombie bite. The goal is to protect her young son Cody, ensuring his survival while teaching him valuable skills in the zombie apocalypse so he can survive on his own one day. Players will need to make use of limited resources to slow down Anne Ling's infection while using survival skills such as crafting, cooking and more. You also need to strike a perfect balance between managing the day's resources and increasing Cody's skills to survive the treacherous journey. For all intents and purposes, Undying might just be one of the most unique takes on the survival games genre yet, and it's expected to release sometime in 2021. Medieval Dynasty by Render Cube is a sandbox survival game with RPG and city builder elements set in a medieval times. You play an 18 year old boy who arrives at his uncle's house. When it turns out your uncle is dead, you are left on your own. You need to take care of your reputation in the area, build a house, which can later become a settlement and start a family to make your dynasty last. The tagline Hunt, Survive, Build and Lead strikes a distinct tone when set against Toplit's previous dynasty titles. Unlike the Leave Build Farm mantra of Farmer Dynasty, this grimy first-person sandbox ditches players into an old world where life isn't easy. Despite the harsh realities that lie before players and a grim backstory sold by war and loss, the opening moments of Medieval Dynasty are panning shots across a gorgeous valley. Valheim opens with a scroll of red runes and slowly bleed into text. The Norse epically unfolds before you, as you are whisked away in another realm in the close of a crowd. Thunder and lightning sound around you before you are dropped into a familiar yet somehow foreign landscape. There is a sense of mystery and awe as the melodic score begins to play. You are here, you are in Valheim. Yet despite all of these fantastical elements, Valheim remains grounded in a sense of realism that adds to the experience in a tangible ways. The game offers a clean blend of exploration, RPG elements and a massive open world that somehow manages to feel organic. It seems to be the perfect storm with 4 million copies already sold. In State of Decay 3, players will once again be able to fight for their lives with a whole lot of survival game elements. 
This time around the game seems to have a snowy landscape, which could include survival aspects such as getting out of the coat. In the one and only trailer we also see an undead deer eating a fresh kill, which could mean mutated animals will play a large part in State of Decay 3. Supporters of that matter have in some cases been waiting a long time for the almost impossibly ambitious multiplayer zombie survival game to come out. It's been more than 3 years since the project was first announced on Kickstarter and since then Canadian developer QI Software has gone through a couple of delays and additional crowdfunding campaigns. When you look at footage of that matter, it's familiar enough at first. It's an open world game set in a post-apocalyptic version of rural Alberta, Canada. Zombies lurk in the eerily familiar gas stations and supermarkets along a main road that could be plugged from any small town in North America. But it quickly becomes clear that that matter is aiming for a much more complex survival experience than you'll find in a similar games like State of Decay 2 or DayZ. How you go about surviving in a zombie infested Alberta mining town is up to you. You can work together with other players or on your own. You'll be able to customize and drive vehicles, hunt animals for food and forage a wide range of locations for supplies. The Riftbreaker is a mutant hybrid, part base building romp with serious tower defense vibes. Not entirely surprising given that it comes from the creators of X-Morph Defense and survival mechanics part action RPG where you can slaughter thousands of aliens in your resilient mech. Galatia 37 is an alien world where we have to establish a base that will allow us to travel between the new world and Earth. Watching tides of alien nesties exploding in a shower of blood and gibbs sure is satisfying and also a gratuitous level of goriness we don't normally see in strategy games or in this case, strategy adjacent. You can blast them with nukes, set fire to everything or get up close and personal and just start slicing everything up with your sword. It's so very extra. Turtle Rock Studios Back for Blood was revealed during the last year's The Game Awards, a spiritual successor to the Left 4 Dead games. Back 4 Blood quickly amassed a decent fanbase that is anxiously waiting for it to release in June of this year. Just like in Left 4 Dead, the focus is on facing humongous hordes of zombies while trying to ensure the team's survival. The game's shooting mechanics seem to be different than Left 4 Dead games, with the biggest change being the addition of iron sights to weapons. The gunplay seems fun and engaging, which is a good thing considering the game is supposed to be played with friends for a long time. Back 4 Blood's zombie types also seem to be a lot more in number than their previous games. The gameplay showcases a lot of special zombies with two distinct giants, one of which looks strikingly similar to one of Bloodborne's most powerful bosses, the Orphan of Cause. Dying Light 2, which we got a taste of E3 2019, looks even better than the original. And the original was pretty great. Techland's first zombie parkour game left a lasting impression and received a decent post-release support. At the Microsoft E3 2019 conference, Dying Light 2 originally had a Spring 2020 release window. In January 2020, Techland announced that the sequel has been delayed and haven't talked release windows in the years since. It's a bummer to hear that Techland is indefinitely delaying Dying Light 2, but the bright side is the studio is using the time to work on the game's story. A developer of the game said that delaying the game opened opportunities to nail down the story part of the game, choices our players can make, as well as up the level of open world opportunities the player will face. That's really great to hear, even if it means we might not get our hands on Dying Light for a while yet. Based on what we've seen, it should be worth the wait. 